Hello, my name is Ken, and I want to welcome you back to Deep Water. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strength Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out, the will and calling of God in our lives. The title of this message is Sleeping with a Dumbbell. This is a multi-episode series in which this is episode 12 of 14. Looks like we will begin with a bang starting in verse 4. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. So wow, now this portion of scripture may prove that God is actually a man, because I cannot imagine a woman writing this in the word. No how, no way. (laughs) You know, I'm just kidding. Of course you would if you were God, right? So in marriage, the bride is not just given away, but is also giving something away. She is giving up authority over her own body and giving it to her husband freely and willingly. What? Now, some of you are thinking that I have written this in my Bible and that it doesn't exist in yours. Keep in mind, we are taught these things as if we were actually going to do them. If your marriage is not healthy, then men, don't try to occupy the land even though you hold the deed. For real, get the marriage healthy, which will include these things over time. Let's decomment. I have removed the parts of the definition that do not apply in the context of the scripture. Authority. The power to determine, the right to control or command, a power or right, delegation or given. Who has the authority to grant permission? A person in whom authority is vested. So we see that the instruction is very specific, and I believe it is designed to be that way. Relinquishing authority over your own body takes courage and trust. But nonetheless, in the deeper meaning, I believe it is saying headaches are not an excuse to ignore sex. Remember, in marriage, the switch is on, all the time for men. Age or an unnatural testosterone depletion is now the only thing that can dim the switch. Well, that and God. But he is not in the business of doing so unless both parties agree on the celibacy, or one chooses not to remarry after the loss of a first marriage. Even in the case of the lost marriage, he may not turn off the switch, in which case he will need his grace and self-control not your own self-generated self-control, as I have found this all but impossible, but his. Not to say that you are not more spiritually mature than me, and I hope that you are, but just to say that it has been my experience thus far that self-control is a difficult thing. Back to scripture. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Funny that in this section of the verse, Paul actually repeats himself for both genders and doesn't leave it to chance like he did in the above rendering verse. Even funnier is the fact that the switches of men and women usually turn on in different times in life. Huh? Not very funny, is it? Generally, for men, the switch is turned on in their youth, especially if they are encouraged to act like a dog early on in life. But for women, it would seem that the switch is turned on later, much later in some cases. I'm not sure that there is some switch on her overlap. And I'm also sure that God made it this way on purpose. Perhaps and I'm just saying that God figured out that it would take men a couple of decades to figure out that women should also be enjoying sex to the degree that they are. Sex is not a one-way street, men. She should get there as much as you will. This is why chatting about how your body works with your spouse is vitally important, women. Hoping the men figure it out on their own, or depending on their secular or Christian training, will leave you feeling like a tool and a convenience and nothing more. I'm telling you that this is solvable, possible, and so, so rewarding. Ultimately, healthy sexuality involves both sexes, period. Verse 5, do not deprive one another except with consent for a time. So we see two very important words here, time and consent. You must agree not to have sex and set a time frame for when the sex fast will be over. DCOM says of deprive. To remove or withhold something from enjoyment or possession of a person or persons. So again, it is okay to withhold or abstain from sex. The reasons are coming for an agreed upon time. Back to scripture. That you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. What this doesn't say is that you can abstain so that you can go shopping or visit your girlfriend every weekend, does it wives? Getting lost in or at the gym does not qualify. Going fishing or hunting. Hanging out in a garage for endless hours doesn't qualify, men. Watching the kids does not qualify. I'm not saying to neglect your kids for the sake of sex. So we see here that since most Christians, for right now, 
do not go anywhere to pray, and many, I say many, do not fast, there will be very few times, if any, where you will need to have a plan in place. So but then why did Paul even place this in the Bible if it would be all but irrelevant in the future church? I think that because it was a very normal thing to pray and fast in his time, as it should be for ours. That's another message. He was writing to a very different audience. Now, no, I did not say that this scripture no longer applies to us today, because we decided somewhere in times past that praying and fasting were no longer necessary. But I'm saying that our neglecting of the needful things doesn't wash away the instruction. So today it may look like you're going to seminary, or maybe just a five-day conference. It would be these or similar spiritual events, which did not necessarily exist when Paul wrote the scripture, that may apply today. A college or university homework load does not qualify as an excuse to neglect one another either. Back to scripture. And come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. I hope this is not too difficult to understand, given that I am breaking the scripture down line by line. I would recommend that you read it in its entirety so that you get its flow in totality. So here we see for the first time a new slimy character introduced into the picture. Written in the form of the message so far, it would sound something like this. Have sex on the agreed upon time so that Satan won't take advantage of your lack of self-control. He wouldn't do that, would he? Yep, and do it swiftly. The switch I keep chatting about works like a dimmer switch. After sex, it's on, but at the lowest setting. Then as time passes, it steadily increases or turns up until, and this could be different for others, it is time for the time. To be honest, I hate waiting for the switch to be on to full blast before taking any action. Sex plays out differently when done in desperation. Again, it may not play out like this for everyone. Verse 6, but I say this as a concession, not as a commandment. So we see here that Paul is not quoting a commandment of God. Let's see what concession means. Decom states the act of conceding or yielding as a right, a privilege, or a point or fact in an argument. The thing or pointed yielded. So when we enter into this part of our relationship, in order to be able to stand and we be found standing with regards to this issue, we should be a yielder to our own ways, our own thoughts and feelings about sex, and take care of business as if avoiding a future losing battle. I guess that is, unless you think your partner is strong enough to take on the devil in these matters by themselves. I know many have tried and failed to their own demise, well, and to the demise of others. Verse 7, For I wish that all men were even as I myself, but each one has his own gift from God, one in this manner and another in that. Remember the gift of celibacy that I was talking about earlier? Here is Paul talking about it. If you don't have it, find a wife, because he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Verse 8, But I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. This is Paul saying it without saying it, and that is that you can choose celibacy if you are unmarried or a widow. In Matthews we see it said that there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs. So does this prove me wrong and that I believe celibacy is a gift from God? Nope. See, it states in this verse that they were already eunuchs. Matthew 19, 12. For there are eunuchs who were born thus, from their mother's womb. And there are eunuchs who were made eunuchs by men. And there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He who was able to accept it, let him accept it. So here in that verse, it's saying he who is able to accept it. So you've got to have something going for you if you choose that type of a lifestyle. Verse 9, but if they cannot exercise self-control, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Well, that's it for today. Well, hmm, don't burn with passion. If that's the case right now, then do something about it right now and listen to the next message. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages but what you can take away from it. Together we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, steal, and destroy the works of the enemy and create space for the light of light to shine through into people's lives. Plant a seed and click on the like and subscribe button. 
Let's build this ministry together. Thanks and see you next time in deep water.